let's dive in then. So a process in Gleam is a lightweight concurrent unit of execution. Other languages might call this a coroutine or a green thread. Every process has a unique identifier called a PID. These can be used to monitor or kill processes. So we can get a PID um, calling process.self and that comes from the Erlang module. We can spawn a new process using the start function. It takes two arguments, a function to run in the new process and a Boolean indicating whether the new process should be linked to the current process. Ah, right, so this is what Ryan was talking about last night. Uh, linked processes fail together. One crashing causes the other to crash. The link is bi-directional. So we probably wanna do that. So here we're saying process.start, we're passing in our callback function we're getting a PID. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the PID is the PID of the child process. Doing work in other processes is well and good, but if we want to send messages between different processes, we need a subject, aka our mailbox in our OCaml example. Um, the subject is a combination of a unique identifier and the process ID of the process that created it. So we say new subject. Once we have a subject, we can use it to send messages to the owner process from any other process. Once we have a subject, we can use it to send messages process that start. Okay, so we create I'm assuming we create the subject in the parent process and then give the child process the subject. The receive function is used to listen for messages sent to the subject. Okay, so this is, I can already see how we're going to um, potentially send messages back and forth. If you ever dabbled in Erlang Elixir concurrency, you may be used to sending messages to a PID directly. In Gleam, we use subjects, which have a few advantages over process IDs. They are generic over the message type, so we get type-safe messages. Love that. <clears throat> you can have multiple per process. You can use multiple subjects to decouple the order in which messages are sent from the order in which they're received. So we make a second subject. We start to, we start another child process and then the child process sends messages to the different subjects. Okay, so we might not just use subjects directly. If you want something like a server, a long running process which will receive and respond to messages, the actor abstraction is the way to go. An actor is Gleam's equivalent to the gen server, yes. It has a different name because it has a different API due to static typing. If you want to run a bunch of processes concurrently to perform work and collect the results, or you want to convert portions of synchronous code to run it concurrently and only block once you need the results, you want the task module. It's great for the dead simple, do this somewhere else and I'll let you know when it's done case. Okay. Before you run off reading those sections, though, let's discuss subjects a bit more. So we're creating a subject, aka mailbox, which can receive strings. <laughs> subject works a little bit like a mailbox. You can send message to it from any process. You can only receive messages from the process that created it. Under the hood, every Erlang process has its own mailbox. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> Notice that the subject's type is subject string. Subjects are generic over the type of the message they can send receive. This is nice because the type system will ensure us that we're not sending and receiving the wrong type of message, and we can do less runtime checking than in a dynamic language. Beautiful. The other thing you want to know is about selectors. Remember the example from earlier where we sent messages from two different subjects? Selectors is the thing that um, Leandro is adding to Riot, I think, or maybe he already did. Um, we had to choose which ones to wait for first. We waited for, this is gonna probably look like go select keyword. Um, what if we wanted to deal with messages as they came in, regardless of which subject they came from? That's what selectors are for. They'll let you wait for messages from multiple subjects at once. The catch is that selecting from a selector has to produce only one type of message. That's fine. We can wrap in a variant. Uh, so you need to map the message to a common type. 
In this example, I want to receive messages as strings, so I tell the selector to turn subject one's message into string using int to string, and to leave subject two's messages alone using the identity function. Yeah, so great, great. This makes a ton of sense. We wait, and we can get a string back from either process. It doesn't matter. That sounds awesome. The functions all take a subject message as their first argument. We use this to send messages to the actor. Okay. Functions that need to get a message back from the actor. Use actor.call to send a message and wait for a reply. I don't think our parent process ever needs to contact the child. The child just needs to contact the parent. What do we do with the redirect URI? Why does the redirect server need the redirect URI? Oh, 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 we make the redirect URI configurable. I see, we're never sending it. That's actually a good idea I hadn't considered. Um, okay, that's, that's a good idea. Turns out that I sometimes have good ideas. <laughs>